As a teacher, the term chromosome is a really annoying one to teach because I know what it means. It's just a molecule of DNA and scientists know what it means. But when students first start to study it, they very easily get confused. And the reason for that depends on some historical stuff. If you go back in time to when scientists were first trying to figure out how do living things work, the biggest tool that they were using at that time was the microscope. And when they looked through a microscope, they saw these amazing things that they called cells. Now, if you've ever looked at a microscope at some real cells, a lot of times they look like clear bags filled with clear stuff with some clear stuff in them. And it's really hard to spot. So what they started doing is they started adding little dyes. And they found that one particular dye would stick to anything that had nitrogen in it. And they found, whoa, look in the center of this cell, there's some colored stuff that has nitrogen in it. So they called it colored stuff with nitrogen in it. And that's what chromatin is. Chroma means colored. All right? N is a word that's often slapped on, or a suffix that's often slapped onto words to mean it has nitrogen in it. And so chromatin was the name they gave to the stuff that was inside the nucleus of those cells. And that's, we know now, the DNA molecules spread out. Why are they spread out at that time? Because they're being used. The cell is reading genes, sending out messenger RNA, doing all the things that the cell needs to do. Now, when I say spread out, I don't mean it's completely unwound. Because you have six feet of DNA in every single one of your cells. And in order to keep that DNA from being all broken and packaged up so it fits nicely, it actually gets wrapped around these specialized uh, proteins called histones. But just like if you've seen an old cassette tape, you've got the two spools with the tape wrapped very tightly around it, there is some part in the middle where it's unwound so that you can read it. So during the normal cell life, the DNA is spread out, the chromosomes are spread out, and looking through a microscope, you would call it chromatin. Now, a visible chromosome is what you call the tightly packaged up DNA that you have shortly before and during cell division. Because at that time, you're moving the DNA from one side of the cell to another. You don't need to use it, you just need to make sure it gets delivered properly without any damage or any loss or um, ch changes to the DNA during that process. Much like if I looked at your stuff in your bedroom right now, I'm pretty sure it's in the chromatin spread out all over the place stuff. But if you're going to move from one house to the next, you would package it up. It's still the same stuff, all of your clothing, etc., but it's loosely organized versus tightly packaged up. Now, why did scientists at the time, looking through microscopes, call it something different? That's because sometimes when they look through a microscope, they would see just colored stuff filling that center part. Other times they saw colored objects. So they used their root words again, and chroma again means colored. Some means body or object. So they said, hey, there's colored objects in there. It must be something different than that colored stuff we saw earlier. So they called it a completely different name, even though it's the same stuff. It's still that same molecules of DNA. Now, it turns out that you know that during cell division, right before cell division, there's that S phase when you copy the DNA. So instead of having one individual molecule of DNA, you'll have two DNA molecules temporarily attached to each other so that they can be uh, easily transported to the middle of the cell before uh, anaphase when they're ripped apart. So for one brief period of time, a chromosome, a visible chromosome, can be made out of two molecules of DNA. If that's the case, you call those two individual molecules a chromatid and a chromatid. So this is a chromosome made out of two chromatids, just like this is a visible chromosome, but it's only made out of one molecule. We don't bother calling it a chromatid at that point because chromatid means a subpart of a chromosome. All right. Now let's take a look at this YouTube video over here. It's going to show us how DNA actually gets packaged up around histone proteins to compact it and make it easier to have it organized in the cell. So first we're going to begin looking at the DNA double helix. Now this is a really cool uh, video in that it shows pretty accurately the actual structures. So here's our DNA molecule, our double helix, and it's bouncing around, uh, twitching a little bit because it's in the nucleoplasm, floating around, being hit by water molecules, etc. We need to wrap it around that spool. So we bring in some proteins called histone proteins, and we package these together, and we wind up with a double wrap around every spool of histone proteins. We call these 
individual spools with DNA wrapped around them, nucleosomes. Sometimes you'll have those arranged like beads on a string, it's called. Then you start coiling up these nucleosomes together into tight supercoils. And then you take these coils and you make even greater coils. And this is how you're able to fit six feet of DNA, like I said, into such a small space, smaller than the smallest dot you can make on your paper with your pencil. And so even in the chromatin stage, which is loosely organized, it's like this. But shortly before cell division, you start to wrap these coils up and supercoil them and arrange them on protein scaffolding to form the chromosome. Now, if we pull back, this is an actual picture of, through a microscope of a living cell, and you can see the chromosomes being moved around during cell division. They get lined up in the middle, and then they'll separate, and you'll see the individual chromatids being pulled apart, and here they go. And now that this chromatid is separate from that one over there, each of them is considered an individual chromosome. And that's the structure of a chromosome.